Visit TheHonestCarpenter.com and get your home-related questions answered by a trade expert. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to fix a door that doesn't latch. I like these three repairs because you can try one and if it doesn't work, you can just move on to the next one. They kind of get increasingly more complicated. Uh, as you can see, this is a bathroom door. If you just push it from the inside, the latch obviously isn't catching in the strike plate. You don't want that in a bathroom. 99% of the time, this is because the latch is too low on the strike plate. Just look at the wear pattern, the, the little marks that the latch leaves behind on the strike plate. Here you can see it's kind of taken off some of the, some of the polish here. And I can just tell that the latch is too low on the strike plate. You can also get outside the room and just line it up by eye. Get on your knee, look straight at it, see how far down it is on the strike plate. Obviously, it's too low. It's not going to fall in the hole there on the strike plate. And you can even take something like a pencil or a little marker and put a couple of reference marks and sight it that way by eye. But whatever the case, it's just a little too low here. So the first fix is to drive the strike plate down a little bit. I take a big screwdriver to do this and generally just a 16 ounce hammer and being careful not to hit my thumb, I just tap the bottom lip of the strike plate really hard several times. This kind of forces down the wood inside the latch hole as well. Then I can step out into the hallway, push it shut and just see if it latches. Here I'm pulling on it pretty hard and it finally let go at the last second. So that didn't work. Sometimes it does and you can just walk away from it for a while. But if it doesn't work, you move on to fix number two, which is to file the strike plate down. I go ahead and remove the strike plate by backing off the screws with the screwdriver. Then you can just pull it off. Sometimes I'll put it into vice to do this next step. But I'm going to show it here by just demonstrating it, holding it in my hand. This is a metal file. Cobalt made this. It comes in like a pack of three. I just hold the strike plate in my hand and I pass the file back and forth across the bottom lip of the strike plate. And uh, you want to make sure you do this evenly, work it from side to side, and you're just kind of grinding down the metal of that strike plate there. I'm going to turn it over, and you can see I've just begun. It takes a while to do this, but I've created a rough edge at the bottom there. I'm slowly removing material. You can go all the way down to the screw hole that you see me pressing my thumb against there uh, and stop just short of, of cutting into that screw hole. Take it, put it back on. Nobody's really going to notice that you uh, filed down the metal a little bit, but it creates a little more clearance. So here you see me closing the door and this actually holds pretty well. I could probably walk away from this one and it would be fine. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show the third fix as well. And this, this is the most comp complex one. I'm going to reposition the entire strike plate. I'm going to move the whole strike plate downwards. So I take off the screws again and uh, gently take off the strike plate and I just line it up where I want it. I don't want it so low that the screw hole overlaps the latch hole. I kind of want it between the old screw hole and the latch hole, just like that. Maybe about an eighth inch or three sixteenths down. This is going to be the new position of the strike plate. So I carefully pin it there with my thumb. Then I'm going to take a pencil to mark the new screw hole locations. I just draw a little circle inside uh, the screw hole with my lead. And then I also trace the line along the bottom edge of the strike plate because we're going to have to chisel that out. And I draw the little corner there as well. And the first thing we have to do is fill in the old screw holes or a drill or a screw will want to fall in there. And uh, most everybody that I know just does this with toothpicks. You can do it with a different piece of wood, but I'm just going to put a little super glue on these toothpicks here. In fact, you can use a lot of super glue because you really want these, these things to fill in the old screw hole and stay put. And I'm just going to put the one in first and put the second one in after it. I'm going to wedge them in as hard as I can, get them pretty deep into this old screw hole location. There, they're pretty firm. And uh, I'm just going to give about 10 minutes to dry up and do the other one. Again, you really can't use too much super glue here, so just blob it on. Put the first one in, wedge the second one in after it, and make sure it's really tightly fitted in there. And I wipe off a little excess glue. Now I switch over to a Stanley utility knife with a really sharp blade, and I just notch the the edge of these toothpicks. I just kind of press the blade into them to create a little notch right there. When those notches are in place, really all you have to do 
is just turn these things sideways a bit. They'll pop right off flush with the outer face of the screw hole. I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom here. Break those off. And then to clean things up a little bit more, I usually take my hammer and I tap the face of the hammer against the little pieces of wood that are sticking out there. That's just going to make sure they're sitting down in their flush. They won't affect anything later on. Now I take a trim nail and my hammer and I'm going to set little pinpoints where my new screw locations are going to be. I tap it in. This is a preparation for drilling. You go ahead and create a little hole right where you want it and it's going to help guide the drill bit later on. You don't have to go too deep just uh, about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. Then I put my smallest titanium drill bit into this uh, 18 volt Hitachi drill and I follow those little pinpricks I set in there. Drill very carefully. You don't want to break a tiny little bit like this. They're kind of fragile. But you want to punch all the way through these new screw hole locations and back out and clear some of the wood. Then put in the next largest bit, whatever it is, and follow those same screw holes with this slightly larger bit. You're just clearing out wood little by little, but you notice it doesn't want to wander into the old screw hole location because we've filled it in with wood. And uh, now I have my eighth inch drill bit. It's appropriately sized for this screw. And one more time, I just kind of ream out those same screw holes. They're a little bigger. And before I even try to do anything else, I go ahead and hand set the screws. This is just basically letting the screw cut new channels for the threads. And uh, it'll make it a little easier to mount the plate later. It's just another little preparation technique that smooths things along a bit. Now we've got to get rid of that little bottom lip of wood down there. And I start by carefully cutting a scribe line with my uh, utility knife. I just do this by hand. Make sure you don't slash the jam or anything too badly. And then I can even cut that little turn at the corner. Put my utility knife away. And now I can take a one inch chisel that's fairly sharp, line it up in that little scribe line I just put in for myself, and give it several hard taps with the hammer. You really want to try to gouge the full depth before you do anything else. It's really easy to split your jam in this process and prepping it with this chisel is going to help. Now I can try to cut down to that line from the top, but I'm going very gently. You can totally uh, gouge out a bunch of your jam if you're not careful. So very gently I just tap down and I break out that little wedge that I made for myself. And then I clean it up with paring strokes. I don't even use my hammer. I just use my hands to kind of gently push the chisel down and I'm just removing any wood that would be in the way. Then I can put my stripe plate on and see how it feels. That actually sits down really flush. So I go ahead and uh, now put my screws in and we're not quite done, but it's good to have the strike plate kind of uh, tacked in place at this point. But we gotta get rid of this little extra bit of wood that's in here. That can also prevent the latch from falling into place. So I go ahead and take a pencil to kind of help me see what needs to be removed. And then I just begin cutting out that material. Once again, you can either remove the strike plate or leave it on when you do this. I remove the strike plate, but I'm just trying to pare out as much of that wood as I can. This is tricky. You can use your drill carefully in a back and forth motion to just kind of gouge it out. And there you can see it's a little bit better now. I also put a little bit of caulk and paint in there to prep that interior surface. Strike plate's in place. I go ahead and fully attach it at this point. There, sitting pretty flush. Now we just have to deal with that little gap that's left at the top. You can either do this with wood filler or a couple applications of caulk. I generally use caulk because you can just kind of wipe it off with your finger if it gets anywhere. You don't have to do much sanding. Uh, I'm not even gonna, in this video, I'm not gonna show the multiple applications. I'm just gonna show one. Notice how I'm just following the shape of that indentation. You can wipe it off the strike plate really easily. And that's the first coat there. It's pretty well filled in. You can let that dry up. Do that again a couple more times just with your fingers and you're ready to paint. So here it is. Again, not totally perfect visually yet, but it's uh, on its way there. And the most important thing, you push this door closed and the latch falls pretty much right in the center of the latch hole. That's exactly what we want. You can test it by just turning the knob, opening it again, 
and just watch the position of the latch as it falls in. That's perfect. You can usually hear it snap into place. Give it a full, few hard pulls and you'll know for sure that it's really catching. But now this is some bathroom that someone can use without fear that the door is going to pop open. And that's how you fix a, a door that won't latch. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe below. And keep an eye out for more videos from The Honest Carpenter. We're now offering live video consultations and phone consultations to homeowners nationwide. To get your most important home-related questions answered by a trade expert, just visit thehonestcarpenter.com.